Hello! Welcome to a Game Maker tutorial this time, because, um, yeah. I thought about doing, I just felt like doing a tutorial today, which is just, just a, yeah. So, today I'm going to show you how to make cutscenes. So first of all, I'm going to go get the sprite, so. Step one is we have to have an OBJ, uh, I'm just going to call this one Hero, and, uh, uh actually, I'm going to add another thing. I'm going to duplicate this and make gray blo blocked, and, uh, there's going to be a thing involving uh, the gray block. Okay, so we're going to have the Hero right here. We're going to have a villain. That was my great feeling, but villain what I wanted right and we're also going to have the gray block as um you know the person that you know something's gonna happen to the gray block that, and the hero is gonna have to do something. But this isn't about the game, it's more about the cutscene. So and we're also going to just have a normal block. So now just this is the part where you make the room for your cutscene. So I'm just gonna call this RM opening cutscene. I'm gonna make background white and I'm gonna change it to 480 by 480. It starts now at a default of bigger, but I feel like I think it's like 1024, like the normal like the res like the smallest resolution. But right here we're basically going to have a scene and um, okay so I've made this really simple room. Basically what'll happen is the red block will actually avoid uh, like a ma like a bunch of just blocks everywhere, which I'm now placing. It'll basically avoid all of these, and then it will go take the gray block. The gray block will um, then have to go back. It will then be stolen, and then we're gonna have the blue block leave out this door. So. I do not want to remove that. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to basically create a path that, well, the um, the uh, red red block will follow. So it's not going to be closed. It's going to be a completely open path, and basically it'll go this way, and then it will go down because I don't know. Just gonna this is just basically just an opening cutscene. Doesn't need well. The, well does need to make sense. Okay. And then I'm going to have to make a, another path. I have to make another path, and basically this path, however, will be the path back. So I'm actually going to give these paths names. I'm going to call this one path underscore um, red jur journey 2. And then I'm going to do path red journey back so um here we go so the journey back will start here we'll go up we'll go down we'll go around this time though it'll go down it'll actually go um, down uh, and around these blocks here so you know just to make it more interesting the the blue block Okay, so, another thing is that we'll have to do this again, but we'll have to make this, but we'll also have to make a path gray journey out. Yeah, I have to click insert, so I click here and insert another path, another part of the path. So I'm actually going to move this here. So it'll start here, move up. However, it will move up and follow, you know, the bad guy out the room. And then, lastly, I'll need the blue start quest. Which, of course, I'm not going to be programming in a quest. Maybe this will be, you know, this is just a cutscene tutorial. But he will basically just take the most direct route possible. And there will also be some dialogue going on. So, um, time to assign things. I think it would be. So let's start off with the timeline. We're going to call this TML cutscene. And what a timeline is, is basically you indicate a moment of steps 
that an action happens. So this will basically be the first action to happen in the timeline. And you can even call other timelines from timelines. And you can change your timeline speed. Almost everything can be done with timelines. So, basically the first thing to happen is the villain will basically begin its journey at speed of 5. At the end, it'll stop. And I need to figure out how many this will be. So what I'll do is I'll actually um, pick something, do a draw event, have it draw itself, and then draw, and then actually we'll start off with the create variable, and we'll have it just start, okay, time to one relative, and this will basically be the time. Also, you could alternatively see how many steps this will take, but, yeah, so, it'll draw the variable time at, like, I'm just going to make this 64, 64, and there we go. So now we're going to basically have the time set before reading it. Was it set before reading it? Oh, we, we need to set it before reading it. So create event. You should have done this. Time is equal to zero. So now this will probably work. So it should be coming. It doesn't seem to be. Oh, wait, I never ran the timeline. Always make sure to run the timeline, because if you don't run the timeline, then that's very bad. Just start here, start immediately, and do not loop it. So it'll basically just start the timeline up. And we'll also have the time variable being drawn, hopefully. Does 64, 64 really need to be in a block? 48, okay, 48, 48. I put it in a block by accident, that's pretty stupid. Okay, so here's the number, and this is basically we need to figure out where the cutscene stops. 170 is... 175 seems to be where it stops, so... At 175, we're actually going to draw some text to do is we're actually going to use whatever you're drawing the stuff in, and we're actually going to put in some piece of code. It's going to say, draw text, and it's basically going to be 48, 240, global, dot, global dot, current, dialog, and basically, current dialog will either be nothing, which will be what it starts as, will be zero because that'll show zero. It'll be some quota some empty quotation marks. So what'll happen here is we're actually going to change a variable current well it's gonna be global current dialogue and it's gonna be equal to um red block saying that sounds stupid. Uh, I'm not not teaching you how to write a story, um, so I need to change this from current dialogue to global dot current dialogue. By the way, I'm doing these things um, every week. I'm going to be doing a different thing. So this week I'm doing a game maker tutorial. Next week it'll be another live stream, then a tutorial, then a live stream, and that's the plan. So. Here we go, we got the time, it's just doing its thing, keeping the time. And ha ha ha, I captured the gray block in all of its glory, I guess. Even though this should be a bit higher. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna go get rid of one of these. Okay. Actually, you can actually put a number sign in here to uh, indicate a line break, so. We have a line break there, and what'll happen is we're basically, you want to keep, I'm going to keep this up for five seconds, and then I'm going to start the other paths, the paths to leaving, and then we're going to have the hero block basically say, oh no, and then he'll just go back and save the gray block, and begin his quest to save the gray block, excuse me, this, he's not actually beginning the quest, so, yeah. Then, we'll basically do something else. So, I have a block over here, and I really just seem to be getting in the way of the text. So, no, I do not want to get rid of it. So, 
Now we're going to have to open up a calculator and figure out what's 175. Well, what's 5 times 5 times 60, which is 300. And then we add that to 175, and it's pretty obvious right now that it's going to be 375 at this point, but eh. Just letting you know how you could calculate it, just in case you have some, like, really ridiculous specific numbers. And then we're basically going to set... More of the dialogue. This isn't a dialogue tutorial. Well, it is, kind of, but it's not a dialogue writing tutorial. This is basically just dialogue to show you how where you put the dialogue. So we actually begin the journey back on the red plot on the villain with the speed of five. And the gray block at the speed of five. But it'll have its own path back. So basically now we have five seconds of waiting before. And by the way, the time will actually be removed in the final product of the cutscene. So, so far the cutscene looks like this. Red Block walks through the block forest into the block park, I guess, and then he says his dialogue, haha, ha, I captured the gray block. He says it for five seconds. Then the gray block gets then he just goes and takes the blue block away. And actually, I think that just because of this tutorial, I'm going to change this change this variable to 250, because I do not want this to fast. But remember, make it so that you can at least say the word three times, the, the text three times. And then the next thing will basically be, basically be, um, after that happens, wait, I need to figure out where does the path actually end. So that's the next part. So the next part is to figure out where does the path actually end. And when should the pacing be right. Your timing thing, you, you could be using a stopwatch. I use the Game Maker Step System. Remember to have your room speed set to what you want it to be at the beginning, though, for, for how fast you actually want the cutscene to go, because if you change it, your cutscene will go much faster. So, at 2.50, he starts taking. He starts to, he starts to kidnap the uh, blue block, the gray block, and I guess at four five hundred is when we should actually begin the uh, um, next piece of dialogue. So, the, we'll, we'll say be blue block. Super cheesy. The dialogue is not the best. I've been saying that every time I read a piece of dialogue, but now we're doing the start the quest, and he'll actually start. Yeah, he'll start now. If this is supposed to be the hero block. Also, I think that there should be some dialogue at the beginning. You know, just some introductory message. This is a pretty... This is actually... Uh, yeah. This is my cutscene. It's just for, you know, like a demonstration. So, what's gonna happen now? I wonder. We have a message at the beginning. And that says forest. I'm... I really need to fix that. Bye. That block might be something that someone goes around, but I don't care. It'll just have to walk around the t around the dialogue. Today is a peaceful day in Blockland, but who's that down in Block Forest? Ha ha ha! I captured the gray block. Help me, blue block! Reading out this dialogue, it's just so cheesy. Oh no! Where did gray block go? I better go find him. And now. Getting to the next room using the timeline is your challenge! Yes, your challenge! So, yep, that's a new thing I'm introducing. Your challenge. You 
will be assigned a challenge, and which I will not be showing here because what you learned in this tutorial should cover what the challenge is. So, your challenge, as I said, is to make it so that your character gets to the next room using the timeline. Not using outside room, but because what if the cutscene doesn't end in leaving the room, but using the timeline. So this is the completed version in the cutscene. Thank you for watching. This has been a Truddle 2 video, and I'm just going to let you watch the cutscene that I made. And, yeah. Goodbye.